interested, I'm Emily Marison from OSU Extension in Coshocton County. And just like last week, my kids are here with me in the kitchen. This is Nathan Adams and Julia Adams. And welcome. We're happy to be in your kitchen today too. The first thing we want to show you the recipes we'll be making for today are at our website, which is coshocton.osu.edu. You can go in there and you can find it right on the front page. There's a link. If you click on that, it'll have last week's recipes as well as this week's recipes. And today we're going to be making white chicken chili and double cornbread. But first of all, we want to give a shout out to some of our fans from last week. And I wanted to show everybody a few pictures that were shared with us. So this is our friend Amaya and she made our peanut butter dip last week and they also made the carrot cake pancakes and at their house they can't have gluten or dairy and her mom shared that they were able to adjust the recipe and use gluten-free flour and they could use some dairy-free cream cheese and she said so if you have any for you this this is one of our other friends that we have. She and her brother and sister, the Martin family, all enjoyed our food as well. So a big shout out to our friends that are out there. We miss you, but this is a fun way of staying connected. Friends and family with technology. Um, we are glad that we have this form of technology to be able to do some fun things with you. So, you guys ready to get started? She's watching. Um, we love you, Bev, and we hope that you enjoy seeing your cousins here today, too. All right, so the next thing we need to do is wash our hands. And we had fun with our songs last week, so we found a few new songs this week. Julia's going to go first. And there it goes. chicken chili. Okay, so we talked last week about uh, the importance of family recipes and one of the thoughts that I had as I was trying to think of what kind of recipes that we could make together is what do we actually have in our houses right now? So what kind of things do we have in the pantry? And this is one of the great recipes that comes from my husband and his family uh, actually comes out of the <laughs> It's well loved. The Marison Family Cookbook, Recipe Book, um, and this is called White, Chil white Chicken Chili um, or White Chicken Soup. And um, we enjoy it because it's a pretty easy thing to fix. And one of the things that Nathan noticed as he looked at the recipe was um, there's not a lot to measure in this. So, why is there not a lot to measure, Nathan? Um, because most of it is the whole can or yeah, the whole can or the box and broth. That's right. So it's a pretty easy thing for us to do as kids. Um, here's all of our ingredients. Nathan, if you want to tell us what they are. Okay, so we have two 12 and a half ounce cans of chunk chicken breast, and we're going to have to drain that. And we have um, one 32 ounce carton of reduced sodium chicken broth, and two 15 and a half ounce cans of Great Northern Beans, a 16 ounce jar of salsa, uh, an 8 ounce uh, bag of shredded Monterey Jack cheese, uh, 1 teaspoon of chili powder, um, a half teaspoon of cumin. 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 Yep, that's right. <laughs> and uh, that's it. All right. So it's a very simple thing. Um, now, the first thing we'll start with is the, the chicken. So I'll let you... You start with that. Okay. One cool thing too that has happened a lot lately is you'll notice that on almost all the the cans that we have today, what kind of a top do they have? Like a tab with a, you can pop it off. Right? Yeah, so you don't need to use a um, can opener for that. 
Um, we'll see how, they don't always work, but we'll see how that goes today. So we'll let you go ahead and drain those, Nathan. Okay. And while he's doing that, I'm just gonna talk real quickly about our chicken broth or stock. You could use either one. Um, we're gonna use a lot of canned things. So one of the hidden uh, nutrients that is in our canned products is sodium. And sometimes there can be a lot of sodium that's in those. So look for on the, the label how much sodium is in it. And a lot of times you can look for the phrase reduce sodium, but sometimes that's not always the whole story. So if you look at this one, for instance, so this is, and these are both very, very similar. So they both say on them that they're reduced sodium. Now, the way they can make that name as far as a food product is because it is 30, um, in this, one, this case, 36% less sodium than our regular chicken broth. This one is 33% less sodium than chicken broth. So it has to be a certain percentage and a, a fairly significant uh, percentage reduction in order to, re to claim something to be reduced. But the important thing to do is to still look at your nutrition facts. So in this case, our sodium is 550 grams per one cup, which is a serving, okay? And then in this one, it is the same at 550 milligrams. Nathan, I want you to check this one out. So this one does not say reduce sodium on the front, no. but how much sodium does that one have per serving? 510 milligrams. What was your reaction when you looked at that and I showed you earlier? I was so surprised. I was like, what? It doesn't really make a lot of sense, right? Because you would expect the ones that say reduce sodium to have less sodium than the one that doesn't say it. Right. So make sure that you are not only looking for these great call outs because these are appreciated that the food manufacturers put them on there, but also look at the actual nutrition facts. Um, and sodium is one of those that maybe we don't think too much about for our kids. Uh, but it's still an important thing to, to stay away from whether we're 5 or whether we're 85. Um, we want to make sure that we're not getting a lot of extra sodium in our diet. So any place that we can find to reduce that is a good thing to do, especially when we're going to be using a lot of canned products. So you've got your chicken. You can go ahead and put those in. Okay. And I will give you a... Actually, they're coming out really good. If you need to get anything out, you can use that. And as Nathan is putting this chicken in, one thing that we have noted on the recipe as well, and we'll rinse these out to recycle, is that this there's a lot of options for your chicken yes. when it comes to this. So what are some things that we could do instead? So if you have like some leftover chicken, you could always chop that up and put it in this chili. Um, if you have like whole chicken breasts, you could bake those in the oven and no matter how how you cook your chicken, you always have to make sure that it's 165 degrees. Very good. So my little food safety expert here. When we cook poultry products, we want them to get to 165 degrees for their internal temperature. Yep. Okay, so you can go ahead and add. Okay. We're going to do stock, but stock broth, either one yep. is fine to use. And then as Nathan's pouring that one in, I'll go ahead and get our beans. And so this is similar. You do not have to drain the beans if you want to. Um, I know that's one thing that David doesn't often drain them. Um, I usually, when I'm using um, any kind of bean product like this, because if you look at our, we've got 400 sodium and a half cup of our beans. So if we drain it off, most of that sodium is gonna be trapped in that liquid, and so we'll get rid of some of it. We'll still get plenty of flavor from the beans. I'm gonna go ahead and drain those quickly into the sink. Um, another thing with the beans, we have great northern white beans that we're using, but you could really use any kind of bean for this. There's a lot of different beans that are out there. And, Beans are one of those things that are not usually at the top of kids' favorite food list, um, but when you put it into a product like this where it's got the chicken in it too, there's gonna be cheese, there's gonna be lots of flavors that are in there, it can make the, um, it can uh, maybe make the beans kind of disappear a little bit, but beans are 
just great for us because yeah, I'll do one, you do one. Okay. Um, they have a lot of fiber. Fiber is very healthy for us. Um, it's a, another source of protein. Um, and so many countries around the world. We're recyclers in our house, so yes. we'll get these these rinsed out to recycle. All right. Um, yeah. So we don't we don't eat more beans because it's a great source of protein and fiber for our diets. All right. Okay. We got one jar of salsa. Of salsa. So for this, you can make it. You can go ahead and use your muscles. <laughs> Good job. All right. So this is up to you, whether you're a hot and spicy kind of person or more of a mild, uh, you can use according to whatever your tastes are for that. Yeah, good job. So in our case, we're just using mild today, but certainly if you like things a little spicier, you can add in uh, a medium or, a, or even a hot. All right, now. Is that everything on your list? Yep. Except for and the cheese. Right okay, so why don't you go ahead and take that over to the stove and then we'll have Nathan measure out his spices and then we'll add in the spices and the cheese after we get it heated up a little bit. Which burner should I put it? So I would put it, when you choose a burner on your stove, you should always choose one that fits basically the bottom of whatever pan you're using. So sometimes, that's easier said than done because it depends on how many other things you're using, but that looks like it's the best one to do, okay? okay? And then we're gonna put that on medium, very good. So medium heat, and if you wanna give that a stir, okay, just get it mixed around a little bit. All right, Nathan will be able to measure out his spices, but Julia, I think we should go ahead and get started with our double cornbread. Do you wanna come on in? So if you're just joining us, I'm Emily Marison from Owen Coshocton County. This is Kids in the Kitchen. And we're making some white chicken chili today and also double cornbread. And Julia is gonna help with that. All right, Jules, so what is the first thing that we need to do if we're gonna bake this cornbread? Well, we need to preheat yeah. the oven, right? Okay, so what temperature are we gonna make these? Uh, 425. 425, okay, can you preheat our oven? So we're gonna hit bake up here. So you get to 425, all the way up there, and then hit start. Very good. Okay, so that way, as we're mixing everything up, our oven can be heating and will be all ready for us when it's ready to put it in. Okay, so what kind of ingredients do we need for this? Uh, we need one cup of cornmeal, half cup of harvest flour, four teaspoons of baking powder, one egg oil or one quarter cup eggs to substitute, mm -hmm. a half cup fat-free sour cream or Greek yogurt, two tablespoons of canola oil, one can or, or yeah, one can creamed corn, and cooking spray. Very good. Okay, so this recipe that we're using today comes from our curriculum Dining with Diabetes, which is a program that OSU Extension does. Um, we will be teaching that here in Coshocton County later, the Coshocton Regional Medical Center. So we're excited to have that partnership. Um, have several people that are signed up for that already and uh, offered this last year and this was one of the recipes that we made. One of the things that's nice about it is that it's got um, some extra corn, that it's called double corn because it's cornmeal. We said cornmeal is what we make cornbread out of, right? But it also has the cream corn in it which makes it soft and tender and is a little source of carbohydrate but uh, doesn't give it a whole lot of sugar. Okay, so we will get started here. Okay, can you tell everybody what you're going to be doing for this part? What, just tell us what you're going to be measuring out. I'm going to be measuring out one cup of cornmeal. Okay. That's a probably a smart thing, right? Overflow. Great. Okay. So 
there's a few ways that you can grease your pan. Okay. Some cooking spray. Um, I'm a big fan of Crisco. I keep these sticks in the refrigerator and this is just my greasing pans stick that I use. And to keep my fingers a little clean, I use a little uh, plastic wrap for that. So you just dig it, stick a little in there and then we'll get it on the bottom and on the sides. Or if you're using a, just make sure that you're getting enough so that you got it on this, the sides as well. Now, do we have to make bread out of this, Julia? What else could we no, make? No, we can also make muffins. Mm -hmm. We'll show, how about we do that when we're done? Because we've made them in, into muffins, haven't we? Yeah. To try it both ways. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now we're going to need teaspoons of baking powder. Mm -hmm. And do you know why we add baking powder? I've never asked you this question before. Do you have any guesses what the baking powder does? Fries? Yeah, that's right. Be all fluffy. Okay. They won't be real dense. Now we need one egg or two egg whites. Okay, I think they're still in the refrigerator. One of the cool things, you can just bring the whole thing out. Okay. So where do our eggs come from? We have chickens. Yeah, we have our own. So these are eggs that we get here at our house. Thankfully, they've been a little more productive lately. They were getting a little lazy on us, weren't they? Yeah. We were not getting too many. Now, we could either add one whole, um, in this case, Julia wanted to show off her egg separating skills <coughs> that she has, or I wanted her to show them off. Maybe we'll say that. So there are tools that you can use to separate eggs. You can just use the eggshell itself. Good job. Okay, so we'll keep this egg yolk for later. We'll find some kind of a recipe to use it in. Or we'll just cook it up tomorrow for breakfast. Good job. Flip right through the middle and then you can see she's going back and forth between the sides because eggs are pretty cool. They have these two parts to them and that white will separate off of the yolk, but it takes the work. Oh, good job. And anytime we're working with eggs, we definitely want to wash. We'll get those in the refrigerator. Ooh, it sounds like it's starting to get heated, Nathan. I can hear it moving a little bit. For our science lesson yesterday, Julia was talking about heat transfer. Oh, ooh, there's a shell. Do you remember what kind of heat transfer happened on the stove when we were boiling water? Do you remember what that kind was called? Ooh, good job. Or as long as you're using, um, you know, no sugar added for your Greek yogurt, plain old non-fat Greek yogurt. Here, I'll put it back in. You're going to put it back in? Yeah. Okay. Good scraping. Okay, next we need two tablespoons of canola oil or pure vegetable oil. 
Mm -hmm. Very good, because that's what right now, right? And sometimes we just go with what we have, right? Especially on weeks like this. It's okay to make substitutions. Now, I saw you did a really good job of grabbing that compared to this one. Mm -hmm. So what's the difference between these two spoons that you have? Well, one is a teaspoon, it just has a T-S-P, and this one is a tablespoon, it is T-B-S-P. Mm -hmm. Very good, so a tablespoon is bigger than a teaspoon. Yes. One can of creamed corn. Let's see if this works this time. Right. So we had a little trouble with the pop top last time. It requires some that. muscles, huh? <gasps> Good job. Um, Good muscles. Okay, that's all right. In here? Yep. Because this is—is is it a dry or a wet ingredient? This one is the wet. Right. Keep all of our wets together. It'll look like barf for a few minutes. <laughs> Yeah, it doesn't look as, as appetizing until you get it mixed. Very good. Okay, so you don't have to use creamed corn. You could use just regular sweet corn. I know we, this summer, definitely do that. Just kind of squish some of that down. Or if you have other frozen bought, and, bought uh, sweet corn from the store, you could always squish that down as well. Um, but the cream corn gives it just that extra little tenderness when it bakes and a really good flavor. Okay, that's looking great, Julia. Getting a can collection here. Okay. And... So for this one, I'm gonna stir your dry ingredients around to make sure, especially that we get that baking powder incorporated. <laughs> it's okay. That is why we do this, right? Yeah. We put a plastic cover over top of our recipes. Sometimes things get a little messy and that is okay. All right. That looks good. Ready to mix it all together? Yep. Scrape the sides down. So one of the reasons that we keep our wet and our dry separate is because wet likes to go into wet and dry likes to dry. But it's a little harder to put dry into wet, right? So this part is the most challenging part of mixing. So Julia is doing a great job of scraping the sides down and incorporating the bottom because sometimes those things can get stuck down there in the bottom. But the good thing with the cornbread recipe is that what you want to do is just incorporate it enough, mix it enough so it's just moist, just so that you don't see any flour anymore. And as soon as you get to that point, then we'll be ready <laughs> to put it into our pan. And our oven is almost preheated at this point. It takes a while to get to four degrees. That's looking pretty, Julia. Still got it on the bottom, but he still got all the flour. Right. Yeah, we made some cookies last night. We've been doing a lot of baking, haven't we? Yeah. We're running low on our baking ingredients right now. Because that's one of the things that brings us a lot of comfort is to be in the kitchen and make a lot of recipes together right now. Though it is a gorgeous day outside, so I hope that everybody gets a chance to go out and play outside too. Maybe take a walk or look for, this is springtime, so there's all kinds of bugs that are waking up and all kinds of things outside. So plenty of things to get out. Right, Just as important as eating good nutritional foods is to get outside and get some exercise too. Okay, okay that looks great. Ready to put it into our pan? Yeah. 
pull our pan over. Do you want me to hold it? I will hold it. How are things coming with you, Nathan? Good. Got. Yeah. Oh, it's actually time right now to add the spices and the cheese. So okay. I'll wait to put it in the oven. Yep, as soon as he puts those in, then we'll stick it in the oven. Can you spread it down? Yep. Hey, and it's ready to go. Ready to go. Looking good. All right. So Julia has done a great job of spreading our cornbread around. Now, do you remember when we talked about the muffins? Where where do you see things that might burn on here? All around yeah. The edges. So if you just kind of take a little, either rag or a little paper towel and wipe those little things up then those won't burn on the edges and not that it's a it's not that big of a deal but it makes things smell a little better okay all right okay now this part julia is becoming very proficient at how to put things into the oven and how to take them out so we always look for places that can be hot. Good job, Jules. All right, now, how much time do we need to bake this for? Do you remember from our... We need to bake it for 20. So it says bake our muffins. For 20 minutes, pan or skillet bread for 25 minutes. Right. So, so we need to bake it for 20 minutes. And why don't you, Julia, show everybody what it looks like as a muffin. This is what it looks like as a muffin. Pretty yummy. Mmm, and I can smell the soup is smelling really good. So this has been Kids in the Kitchen today. We've been making white chicken chili, a family recipe and something that's really good for using pantry items especially. Mm -hmm. Easy for kids, there's not a lot of uh, measuring to do, a lot of things that you just get to open up and pour in together. Um, and then you get to use the stove top too. Mm -hmm. And then we've also made double cornbread. So you know, one, cornbread is one of those things that you could get the little box mixes for and we've seen those like the little jiffy mixes or martha white mixes things like that and um there's a lot of box products and things out there that are great because they just already have some of the ingredients in there and you only need to add, add an egg or some milk or things like that just be aware of some of the other boxed things that are out there that may have a lot of extra sodium and sugar and other ingredients um, but this is one of those that you can make from scratch. That's a pretty easy one to do. So we hope that you enjoy your day today. Enjoy the sunshine. And we will be back here for Kids in the Kitchen again next Thursday. And until then, you can look at our website, kashokton.osu.edu. And we will put on next week's recipes probably over the weekend. And then you'll be able to see what we'll be making next week. Uh, we are going to be doing some microwaving next week because that's something that's really convenient for kids to be able to do. But there's some safety that we need to watch out for when it comes to the microwave, so we'll talk about that next week. Until then, have a great week.